um, very similar to kind of Ohio State in, in like this – I don't know if it's a mental hurdle, hurdle or how you want to describe it, but if you look at James Franklin's tenure at Penn State, it's really been defined at his lack of success versus Ohio State and Michigan, right. right, and being able to get through those two. Very similar right now to Ohio State's issue with being able to get past Michigan, right? People tend to forget it's been four years. Wow, God, you, that's Everyone crazy. forgets they didn't play the COVID year. Right, that's they right. the last two. So there's a mental hurdle there for Ohio State. They've got to you know, work in some new players, um, in particular at the quarterback spot, and then you've got you know Penn State trying to get over both. And that's the advantage that Michigan has. That being said, though, I think Penn State's just as talented. I mean, you look on defense, you got Chop Robinson coming off the right. edge. Abdul Carter's one of the best linebackers in the country. Uh, Kalen King's one of the better defensive players in their secondary. You know Manny Diaz is going to bring pressure. You know he's going to have a, a tough defense. And then offensively speaking, I, I think if Drew Aller can be the player, I think he's going to be matched with what they already have in the backfield. It's, it, they're going to be tough to stop. They really are. I mean, I don't, have you seen Drew walk around here? No, I have not yet. He, no. remi- he reminds me of Ben Roethlisberger. Wow. I mean, he's that big. He's, okay. he's a big body. I'll notice him when I see he's him. He's athletic, yeah. Yeah. and he's got a, a howitzer for an arm. We saw him week one last year. He came in when Sean Clifford went down and in a tough spot, and then he was zipping the ball around. I was going, oh, gosh. Like I, could, I get why everyone's <laughs> excited about this right. kid in comparison to kind of what you saw in Clifford. it's This is the type of kid that could be a top-ten prospect here in a couple years. All right, so what one or two players, you named a bunch so far, but one or two other players you haven't named you're excited to see play this year or to kind of come to their own this year? Um, oh, man. I, I think I'm curious to see what, what Cade McNamara, I know you have yeah. a bunch of fans on that. Right, right. I'm curious to see what he's going to be able to do in, uh, with Iowa because, look, that was not a great offensive no. team last right. year. But – Eric All transfers in. Caleb Johnson, to me, kind of broke out as that go-to player that could rely on in the backfield for a running back. The entire offensive line comes back. So I'm curious to see what he'll be there at Iowa. Um, you know, Tanner Mordecai, quarterback of Wisconsin, experienced guy going up there. He's got a ground attack. Luke Fickle there is the head coach. What does that look like? There's a lot of curiosity around, like, the kind of Big Ten West. You know, even, even I just talked to uh, Brett Bielema. Mm. Luke Altmeyer, it comes in as his starting quarterback right at transfer. I mean, it's crazy how the transfer portal <laughs> has impacted, in particular, the quarterback position, but teams, and allowed them to be more competitive right away. You don't have to worry about developing a kid right. or a guy coming in based on recruiting. Like, you can go find a guy who's played and has experience right now. Um, so those are just some of the quarterbacks, I'm, I'm, you know, but – Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best player in the country. That was going to be my obvious one to you. To yeah. like, are you excited I mean, to see him play? Because I, this is a kid who, you, you, when was the last time we talked about, because you're the quarterback, you know the quarterback. Yeah. When we talk about the NFL draft, we're talking about the top two or three quarterbacks. They're going to be in the th- top five. Marvin Harrison Jr. could have went out last year and been a top five pick. He's the best prospect in next year's draft class. Like Now, you've got a quarterback premium that's put on Caleb Williams, Drake May, but the reality is, He's our, he's the best player in the country, right? And and, and he's the player that I, I think I'm curious to see how defenses try to take him away because they it's hard to with Emeka Abuka and right. Fleming and some of the other players. Cornell, Cornell Tate's going to be a, a stud for another them. stud, right? Once he gets on the field, so some South Florida talent, but um, he's he's just special. He does the little things and he makes them look so easy, and yet he's. Bigger than his dad, he's probably had a little more upside than his dad, and his dad was a Hall of Famer. So you're like, you're like going like, oh, this is just on that on that track record to be in the Hall of Fame. Right. So. I, I saw him take a picture today, by the way, right by our booth because Marvin Harrison's dad's name's up there with yeah, him in the picture cool. with him. One of the coolest pictures I've seen taken yeah. so far at media. And days. he's got on the Colts colors, right? You know, you get the Louis Vuitton <laughs> shoes that are Colts out. You get the tie and all that, so it's pretty cool. Of course, you have to do that at this point. All right, cool. Brady, we appreciate your time. Thank yeah. you so much as always for coming by, hanging with us. Saw you on the plane on the way up, so we knew we could grab you for a couple yep. minutes yep. at that point as well. That's Brady Quinn joining us here. He is uh, does a morning show, like I said. He's on the Big Noon Kickoff for Fox. He's doing all this kind of stuff and we appreciate his time a little bit today on Crancis Corner live from Indianapolis at the Big Ten Media Days.